Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next session of our Digital We Days. I'm very happy that you took your time to participate in our session today. And yeah, my name is Markus Ebele, and I will moderate this webinar today together with my two colleagues, Bodo Mum and Pascal Baranger. So Bodo is working as a technical support engineer and Pascal is working as a general support engineer and both in the field of wireless connectivity and sensors at Wolf Electronic. Topic of today is radio conformity and other regulations. And yeah, I will do a quick moderation in the beginning. The presentation from my two colleagues will then be about 30 minutes long. And after that, we have scheduled 10 to 15 minutes for your questions. These questions you cannot ask with your microphone. You are muted in this webinar today. But nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask us all your questions with the WebEx Q&A function. You will find a little um, on the lower right hand side, a little question mark button there. You can answer all or you give us all your questions. So if we can't answer all your questions within this live webinar, we will then answer them later on via email. And if you have any questions left, <laughs> just email us maybe at directly at wcs at we-online.com. So you will also, last information from my side, you will also get the um, presentation and the link to the recording from us via mail in the next days. So you will get all your materials. So now everything from my side. Thank you. I wish you an exciting webinar and give it over to Bodo and Pascal. Yes, hello everyone. I'm Bodo Mum from the technical support team of Wireless Connectivity and Sensors. And uh, this is my colleague, Pascal. Also, warm welcome from my side. My name is Pascal Branger. I'm part of the general support team with Bodo. And um, well, uh, we're happy to have you here uh, in this uh, nice little uh, webinar. And I would suggest just to start with um, our presentation. And now that you can see our presentation and um, well, the biggest word in there is wording. Maybe Bodo, you tell us something about the wording. Yes, of course. So we are talking about certifications today, but um, uh, there are different meanings when, when people talk about certifications. So it is important to know what is meant when we talk about certification. So we start with the wording. Um, we have declaration qualification and certification, for example. And declaration is, for example, the CE, you all know the CE mark. This is uh, the European Declaration of Conformity. We have the UK Declaration of Conformity, the UKCA. When we talk about certification, uh, there's, for example, the FCC for USA, the IC for Canada, ARIP, or also Wi-Fi is a certification. And when we talk about qualification, um, we mean, for example, the Bluetooth qualification and the Bluetooth listing. This is the next one, which is also part of this certification topic. So it is quite important to know what we are talking about. So if it's clear that radio compliance is meant, for example, then uh, it has to clarify for which country, because in each country we have other regulations about certification or the radio conformity. Sounds perfect. Um, thank you for this uh, wording session. And now um, I would like to tell you something about um, our agenda. We will talk about the radio conformity in the um, EU and the uh, UK. Also, um, US, Canada, Japan, China. We will speak about uh, module integration and build your own firmware. And secondly, also, we will speak about radio protocol specific requirements, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and cellular. And um, this is one of my first questions to you, Bodo. Why are we regulating the radio? Yes, this is a good question because regulation is needed because radio spectrum is a limited resource, of course, and uh, its use is strongly growing you know everything is going wireless and uh, more and more in the future so this have to be regulated 
So well, we say it with the words of the Radio Equipment Directive, Article 3, Paragraph 2. Radio equipment shall be so constructed that it both effectively uses and supports the efficient use of radio spectrum in order to avoid harmful interference. <clears throat> So what is the radio directive? Uh, this is uh, the um, European um, standard, so to say. And here in Germany, for example, we have the uh, national laws, the Funkanlagengesetz, which corresponds uh, one to one to the directive. Um, for example, the frequency plan from the Bundesnetzagentur or the general assignment from Bundesnetzagentur. We have these web links in our presentation and you will have it uh, in, in the presentation, which you will get after the session. So you can get the information when you click on these links also. And the important article of the radio uh, directive is the article three. Uh, there it's mentioned uh, radio equipment shall be constructed so to ensure that A, the protection of health and safety of persons and domestic animals and the protection of property, including the objectives with respect to safety requirements set out in these directives and be an adequate level of electromagnetic compatibility is also set out in the, another directive. And uh, the second point we had said already, radio equipment shall be so constructed that it both effectively uses and supports the efficient use of radio spectrum in order to avoid harmful interference. Okay, so first of all, thanks for this um, little introduction. And um, well, um, everyone is talking about security also. It's a big topic for everyone. Can you please um, mention what's about cybersecurity in all the yes. radio protocols? This is um, this uh, part three, paragraph three of the RED. There we talk about cybersecurity. But for us as mm -hmm. manufacturer of yeah. radio modules, it's only important these three points, D, E and F. So um, we doesn't uh, support any personal data on the modules and we doesn't support any transfer of money. So this um, paragraph three is more important for the manufacturer of the end device and uh, not for the module itself. Okay. So the security is very high at the end uh, on the module. So this is, yes, but the uh, manufacturer of the uh, end device has to take care okay. of the of its end device that uh, it belongs to these requirements. So here is a, a list of the different directives and standards we have. And um, here we can see this article three of the RED. Um, we have the EMC in paragraph one with the harmonized standard. We have the paragraph two is the radium spectrum requirements with the depending standards on the different frequency ranges. So for us, uh, with our radio modules, the most important uh, standards are for the 2.4 gigahertz band, as well as for the sub gigahertz band, and for cellular, of course. There are some safety requirements and regulations also for health and for cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. We talked about that, but there's at the moment only a harmonized standard for consumer and uh, not for the industrial products for okay, the moment. Okay, I see. So this uh, RED, the Radio Equipment Directive, comes from the Radio and Telecommunication Terminal Equipment Directive. This was the older one. Yeah. And uh, this comes in June 2017. And uh, just in time, the radio standards had been harmonized in 2017. But the uh, harmonized standards for the EMC are still pending. So we are waiting for that. Okay, perfect. Um, let's talk about um, harmonized standards. Um, are all our modules um, CE conformed with electronic modules? Uh, yes, I think we come uh, later to that point. Okay. But um, yes, we can say all our modules are CE conformed. Okay. Of course. Okay. So and, let's talk uh, about this later again. Yes, yeah. right, right. So these harmonized standards are the, the reference. Um, they must be published in the official journal of the European Union. And the purpose of this website, we will support you here, is uh, to provide access to the latest lists of references of the harmonized standards. 
and other European standards published in the EU. Mm -hmm. So you see, we are talking most time of the European Union. Yeah. <laughs> of course, all our modules are CE conform, but we will also talk about some certifications and regulations in other countries as well. So you see, what are the advantages of a CE conform radio module? Um, the biggest advantage is that the end customer, the, 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 the manufacturer of the end device can use our test report to declare his uh, CE declaration. So he don't need to make these complete tests because we have done it and he can refer to our tests. But we always recommend uh, as a delta check or spot check. Mm. And um, you see, we marked all these green hooks. These tests were done by us, and uh, the manufacturer of the end device can refer to these tests. And this with these blue markings is done with a delta test. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, the big advantage of a CE conform radio module for the end device. Important to know in the EU, the sub gigahertz bands are limited in duty cycle. That means um, it is not allowed to transmit permanently or 100% on a radio channel. And uh, this is important for um, developers who consider uh, to go on some of these sub gigahertz frequencies with this end device. So it's important to know what, what, uh, what I want to do, which transmit power is allowed, which duty cycle and which other regulations I have to consider for developing my module. So this is an important point where uh, the developers have to look about. So let's uh, talk about combined equipment. Do you can imagine what it means? No, I have no, <laughs> I have no idea. I okay. hope you will tell me something about the combined <laughs> equipment. That means you have uh, two or more products of one is the radio product. Yeah. For example, a, a radio module, a Bluetooth module or proprietary radio module and a non-radio product. So a host controller or a washing machine or <laughs> whatever. Okay. Yeah. And um, there is a guide from the Etsy. We have also linked this in the presentation. This is the guide of the harmonized standards, which <clears throat> the customer has to use or to follow so that he don't need uh, an additional assessment for his product. Yeah, okay. And this is uh, just shown here. You have a radio product and a non-radio product, and at the end, you have your end device. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have different ways to do that. You can solder a radio module or your RF part on the existing PCB, or you can place it as two devices mm -hmm. in one housing, and this is the combined equipment. But as already uh, said, we always recommend a delta check or spot check from the end device just to be sure that there are no unwanted emissions or radiations or um, something unexpected mm -hmm. things, especially um, when you have a, a big amount of production. It is really better to test it before with your prototype yeah. before going for sure into the this product. Is true, yes. yes. Yeah, what's that? What has the customer or the manufacturer in this case of the end device to do for the CE? The CE is a self declaration. So the manufacturer of the end products has the sole responsibility that the end product conforms to all applicable requirements. This is very important. The manufacturer of the end device mm -hmm. has the responsibility. Yeah. Even if he uses modules which are uh, certified or something else, the manufacturer of the end product is responsibility for his product. Yeah. So of course he can uh, he can refer to our test reports and do no testing. Yeah. It's okay. But as already said, we uh, after our experience. Um, we have impacts after the integration, of course, of the housing of some metal uh, material around the product or mm -hmm. the housing. And this can have an impact on the antenna, on the radiation. And so we strongly recommend the so-called spot check 
to okay. be sure that everything is fine for the end product. Does also the CE influences the, the firmware? Yes. Yes. Okay. Or the firmware influences the CE. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the, our products, for example, are tested with our firmware yeah. and um, have all certifications and uh, the declarations with our firmware. So if customer does his own firmware, um, <clears throat> it is important. What other, in other words, when we uh, make a firmware individualization or a customization for a customer, and we do this, so the CE conformity is given when the radio resettings are unaffected. Yeah. And we set up an internal documentation and declare that the radio is identical to the conformity assessment. Yeah. And everything is fine. But when uh, the manufacturer of an end device built his own firmware, mm -hmm. Then we, as manufacturer of the radio module, have no control of the conformity. So the customer is fully responsible. As we said before, yeah. when he does some changes, he is fully responsible for this end product. Of course, we can put our CE sign on the label when yeah. we produce the modules with his firmware, but uh, with customer IDs, of course because uh, we want to avoid to be called for account for conformity, because the responsibility is at the manufacturer of the end device. Okay, and Bodo, well, now we talked a lot about the CE and we all um, understood that the CE conformity is for the European Union, but, but since sometimes, since 2020, um, one country left the European Union. <laughs> um, what's about the UK? Yes, you mean the Brexit. <laughs> Correct, yes, the Brexit. Okay, the UK uh, directives are adopted um, from the radio equipment directive to UK directives, but the EU standards became the designated standards for UK also. Okay. And um, I, I said it here in the first line, after shifting the deadline till the CE marking would be accepted several times, now the UK government announced to extend the recognition of the CE marking for placing most goods on the market in Great, uh, Great Britain infidelity. So the radio products are within the scope of announcement. Okay. So this means the CE marking on the product will be continued mm -hmm. in Great Britain until further notice. It's no problem. Okay. You don't need quite, the quite UKCA. Easy. You can okay. further use the CE marking. Perfect. So now our world is much bigger. We talked about the European Union or Europe, Europa and also UK, but uh, the, the world, ah, perfect. Now we have the world a map on here. Tell us something, um, if, is, is there any worldwide certification? No. No. This is easy to say, okay. no, but oh. this is what it makes complicated. Okay. <laughs> Could be um, quite easy, but it's always... Uh, right, right. So in terms of, of radio modules, uh, wireless modules, there is no worldwide certification. Okay. Because uh, every country has different frequency, different standards. So you have uh, different regulations, of course. So you have to do your certification or your declaration depending on each country. So in the EU, for example, you have this self-declaration, um, the CE, also in UK. Yeah. But for a lot of other countries uh, like USA and Canada, um, for example, you need a certification through an authority. Mm -hmm. And you can say as a rule of thumb about uh, 10 key euro per country, what you need for tests and certifications. Okay. And uh, we could say the effort differs from poor paperwork um, to retesting through an official laboratory in the country itself. And also the period of validity is, uh, differs from some years to unlimited we have a uh, limited five years in China, for yeah. example. Okay. And uh, yes, China also is known for continuously changing its rules. So it's very difficult in some countries to get uh, the certification. At the end, you need a lot of effort and probably also money to get the yes. certification for the country. Yes, that's right. Okay. And you see here in this map, um, we have in, in USA and have the C FCC also in this part of South America. Uh, in and here in this part, here in Canada, we have the IC. Uh, this gray is the CE or UKCA. Mm -hmm. And in some other countries, it's 
very different. Uh, some countries refer more to FCC, some countries refer to the uh, RED. Yeah. Some mixed it up, like Australia, for example. Okay. And so you need really to know what is to do in which okay. country. It's very complicated and uh, it's a lot of effort to get the for certification. For each country at the end. For each country. Yeah. So there is no worldwide certification. Okay. We have some frequencies, for example, the 2.4 gigahertz, which is allowed worldwide. Mm -hmm. but um, you will not have a worldwide certification. Okay. Unfortunately yeah. not. Unfortunately not, okay. right. <laughs> right. So I see the time is running. We have to hurry up a little bit. <laughs> so let's talk about the FCC. This is the certification which you need in USA. And uh, there is um, some paragraphs you have to consider in the requirements, the antenna requirements, the... Modular transmitter, radiated emission limits, then the different frequency bands. So for us, it's interesting, the 9.2 to 9.28 megahertz or the 2.4 gigahertz bands. This is what for our products yeah. is interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we also have the link to the FCC where the, the customers or the people can look and inform about the FCC um, requirements. In terms of build your own firmware, it's nearly, I will hurry up to this slide, it's nearly the same than the CE. The manufacturer of the end device has to take care that everything is fine. And when he changes some uh, radio specific parameters, you have to do completely new okay. certification at the end. Okay. Yeah. Quite easy for everyone, I think. Yes. Um, in case of uh, known protocols like Bluetooth Low Energy, using the Nordic stacks, for example, and the tests are performed with the same direct test mode, the manufacturer of the end device can do permissive change class one with internal documentation. Mm -hmm. So this isn't part that he can take over, and this is nearly um, similar with the CE. Yes, of course, when customers uh, build his own firmware and uh, buys module from Wirt Electronic, we can flash the customer's firmware on the modules and label it with the customer ID. Yeah, perfect. Makes it easy for the customer. Yes, but every time the same, the customer or yeah. the, the manufacturer of the end product is fully responsible. Yeah, Wirt is not as a manufacturer. Right. Um, TELEC is a certification for Japan. Okay. We have also some radio models which are certified for uh, Japan. And mm -hmm. uh, TELEC means the certificate, ARIP is the standard, and uh, MIC is the authority. Okay. So mm -hmm. um, it has to be tested through a Japan certified test lab. Important here is that the antenna characteristic is required, required for the certification. And uh, a Telex certified module can be designed and sold or used in Japan without retesting or recertification under the condition that the antenna did not change. So if you use another antenna, you have to add the new antenna and uh, antenna characteristic to the certification. And in Japan, we talk about frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. And uh, in terms of sub gigahertz bands, we have the 920 megahertz but limited to 20 milliwatts. In China, yes, uh, often we hear about the CCC or triple C certification. Yeah. This is needed for an end device. Okay. But in terms of radio modules, um, we have the SRCC, SRRC, the radio conformity certification. And we have a Bluetooth module, which is already um, SRC certified. Perfect. But in China, we have the problem that they are continuously changing the requirements. Um, and the certificate is limited to far five years at the moment. Um, we can talk about costs about 10,500 euro for China certification. And um, the Frequencies used in China is, of course, 2.4 uh, gigahertz mm -hmm. is worldwide for Bluetooth in this case, or cordless phones, remote controls. And in China is also allowed the 433 megahertz for remote controls or 868 megahertz, but limited to 5 milliwatt only for remote controls. Okay. 
Um, is it only in China that the certification lim is limited? No, it's in, in some countries, so it's, okay. it depends. Okay. But China is an example where okay. it is limited. Right. Because five years um, can, can pass quick, or five yes. years is nothing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so let's quick talk about uh, Bluetooth qualification. Um, so is, is a qualification process uh, which required testing or no required testing? And um, in both cases, you, you need to list your Bluetooth product, and you yeah. have costs of about nine. Or not about you have costs of nine thousand six hundred <laughs> US dollar for the Bluetooth listing. But when you have to do the testing for a complete qualification, you have an additional about eight thousand five hundred euro for the test, and also you have to uh, pay money for the Bluetooth qualified consultant. So. This is what we have done for our products. We have our qualified product and with the customer uses uh, a word electronic radio module, which is Bluetooth qualified. And he refers to uh, our modules, to yeah. our qualification. He need no additional testing. So he has only <laughs> the near $9,600 okay, so for the listing. At the end, quite easy also for the customer. Yes. So an, a complete module with firmware, with certification, with qualification is always an easy, fast, and uh, cheap way yeah. to build an end device. So in detail, um, you have this on the presentation. Um, nice links are also placed here where you can inform about the Bluetooth qualification. Um, here you have a list of qualification consultants. And this is a link to our homepage. We have an app note, our okay. Bluetooth listing guide, which helped, uh, helps the developers or the manufacturers to go quick and easy to a Bluetooth listing for his product. Yeah. Is it uh, also um, avoid um, uh, listing by the using by using a Bluetooth dongle? Yeah. Yes. This mm -hmm. is a. Uh, a nice question. So, for example, we have a USB dongle with our radio module, which yeah. is certified and qualified yeah. in our housing with our Mark Word Electronic. Mm -hmm. And uh, using an existing Bluetooth design with existed listing and uh, selling it as distributor, for example, it's possible without any listing. Okay. As long as it is not rebranded. So when you use the same and you reprint with ah, Bodo Electronics, with your company, my company, <laughs> <laughs> but then I need a new listing okay. because it's a new manufacturer. It's a different company. Okay. Even if I use the same product, I have, you to, have to pay the $9,000. Right. I have to okay. pay the $9,600 for a new listing. Okay. And the same is when you integrate this, for example, in a device. If you want to avoid a Bluetooth listing with a built-in Bluetooth module, you can use a USB dongle, for example, at a USB port and the back of a washing machine, for example. Yeah. And you can see the dongle with the brand mark. Yeah. You don't need a listing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so if yeah. you have on the back of the washing machine a USB port, you put in this dongle, you see it's WE. Okay. Everything is fine. You don't need a listing. But but if you integrate this yeah, in okay. the washing machine and you can't see it anymore, yeah. you need a new listing because the yeah. complete device is from a new company. I see. And you have to do the complete yes. user's listing. Qu quite easy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Is there um, well also the possibility to use the declaration for several um, items or applications at the end? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah. You can... Um, so, so to say, a complete product family. Okay. You can list under one listing ID. So, so the product it, family, is it also possible yeah. with a vending machine and a smartwatch? Yes, it's yeah. an extreme example. Yeah. But okay. when you, you use the same unmodified qualified <laughs> design yeah, the, and the same manufacturer, mm -hmm. so the listing holder, and if the Bluetooth specification version has not been withdrawn. Then you can use, for example, in a washing machine or in coffee machine. Okay. You can list it under the same uh, Bluetooth listing ID. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Wi-Fi, um, it's also a certification, mm -hmm. but you don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's it's just to to say um, that the product is Wi-Fi certified. Um, and you can use this uh, nice little mark here, uh, member of the Wi-Fi Alliance. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, our module, the Calypso module, is Wi-Fi certified. Um, yes, you have to be um, a member of the Wi-Fi Alliance, of course, and yeah. you have to pay a fee of about 4,000 US dollar, and then your product is Wi-Fi certified. Okay. That's uh, a quick thing. Easy. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> a bit more complicated. Uh, is it in terms of cellular certification? And this is uh, the last point in our presentation. And um, because this is a bit more complicated, because in the first steps, you have the regulatory certification. Mm -hmm. This means, uh, as we just talked about with all other uh, things at the moment, um, this means the radio certification and the EMC and so on, so the CE or FCC, yeah. the country specific uh, regulations. This is the first steps, but you need for all radio modules. Yep. You need yeah. also for the cellular modules. But then you have additionally uh, to have an industrial certification. Mm -hmm. and therefore, it's the Global Certification Forum, the GCF. This is an organization in which manufacturers, operators, and test laboratories deal with the compliance of the device, um, that they are compliance with the G three GPP standards and specifications. So you need also this. Maybe you need additional certifications for automotive or medical. Um, you see here the PC PTCRB. This is similar to the GCF, but for the USA, Okay. for example. And at the last point, you need okay. a mobile operator specific certification. For example, Vodafone, T-Mobile, Telefonica, Orange, whatever. Yeah. And um, where we have from Broad Electronic, we have our Adastrea one module. Right. Does this cover all these three points? No. No. Not. Okay. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can say uh, at the moment we have, of course, the CE. All our modules have the CE yeah. declaration. And um, we are working on FCC at yeah. the moment. But for now, we have only the CE for the okay. our cellular module. But we have the Deutsche Telekom certification, and we could step this point for the GCF. Mm -hmm. So if you use SIM cards from Deutsche Telekom, yeah. you can use it uh, with roaming for free everywhere. Okay. okay. And then you don't need the second point, the GCF, and you don't need a mobile operator certification because it's okay. complete certified by Deutsche Telekom. And this was a very fast and easy and cheap way to go on the market with our module. Yeah. Because, you know, the normally process a procedure is um, to have the, the um, CE certification, for example, and you need the GCF certification, and then you will get the mobile mm -hmm. operator yeah, I see. Uh, certification. But since the beginning of this year, we have also the GCF certification for our Trustia module. So it's possible to go to your mobile operator and to ask for the requirements for the mobile specific certification. Okay, so at the end, uh, easy and um, more practical for yeah, the customer. That's right. You can use other mobile operators than Deutsche Telekom, but yeah. he have to, to do with his mobile operator the certification then. Yeah. But the basics are there. But if you means... choose telecom, it's quite easy. Right. Okay. Okay. I think, yes, we had an, yeah, abbreviations because mm -hmm. we talked about a lot of <laughs> different <laughs> abbreviations. So we have a slide in the presentation at the end. You will get this um, also that you can see what is meant for this. Perfect. And now we'll come to the most interesting part, oh, which is yeah, maybe so now <laughs> to, the, to the question and answers or to your questions of the participants. Um, we will again hand over to Markus. So, um, yeah, just the information. You can send us all your questions with the Q&A function. You will find that on the lower right hand side with the question mark button. And we are there for you. If we can't come in the live webinar to your questions, then we will answer it later on via email. And of course, we also have a good technical support. And just email us at wcs at, yeah, Bodo is showing the email address. Thank you very much. wcs at we-online.com. So we are here for, your, uh, for you and support you. So then enough said from my side. Um, 
let's start into the questions. First question, where can I use the CE declaration, for example, in which countries? Yes, the CE is the European standard. So um, the CE is for all European countries and also for the UK at the moment, yeah. Marcus, I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry, my microphone got lost. Ah. Uh, I'm back again. <laughs> um, thank you for your answer. Nice. Next question. <laughs> uh, for which countries are the Wolf Electronic Radio modules certified or approved? Ah, okay. Yeah, that's what we already said uh, yeah. um, in the last slides. We have the mm -hmm. CE certification or declaration for all our modules. And uh, all other certification depends also on the countries. So the most certifications we have uh, at the 4.2.4 uh, gigahertz modules, of course. So our Bluetooth module, for example, is also certified in USA, Canada, Japan, China, India. Yes. And uh, it depends on the frequency. Uh, we have sub gigahertz modules, which are certified for uh, FCC and IC, so USA, Canada. And uh, yes, it depends on the country and on the frequency. So all modules are CE certified, of course. Okay, perfect. Thank you for your answer. Then let's just go on. Um, what about the certification in Australia? Ah, this is a very nice point because Australia is uh, <laughs> is, is mixing yeah. up. I, I said it a few yeah. slides before. Correct. Um, in terms of 2.4 gigahertz, they refer to the European standard, to the CE. So um, it's just uh, paperwork <laughs> to get a, a ACMA declaration in Australia. Um, but in terms of sub gigahertz, for example, um, they refer to the FCC. So similar to the American standard, but with limitations in frequency. Um, so it's a bit more difficult to get the certification for sub gigahertz there, but it's possible with also our modules. Also, we have a more bigger frequency range, but we are FCC compliant. And so you can use our modules, but you have to limit it to the uh, allowed frequency range, for example. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Then let's just go on because, yeah, we have some time left for some other questions. Um, can I use the Telecom certified cellular module in USA with the Telecom SIM card? Theoretical, yes. Practical, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you have a, a, a roaming for free with the U Telecom SIM card in UA, of course. But the module is not certified by the FCC for now. At the moment, we have only CE for the cellular module, but we are working on the FCC, and then it will be possible also with the telecom SIM card to use in USA. Yeah. Okay. So there will be something coming, and then it's possible. Sorry? So there will be something coming in for the USA, yes, and we, then yeah. it's possible. Yes, we are, we are working on it. Yeah. Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Then. A uh, question about, yeah, it's really countrywise here, the questions. Um, again, <laughs> on UK, do I know, yeah. uh, do I now need other certifications and need to relabel the UK CA? Uh, no, not really. That's what I said. The government decided uh, to say we have no limit to use the CE marking at the moment. And also the UK CA standard is similar to the CE standard. So this is no problem. Okay, so not all is bad with the European right. Union. <laughs> That's right. It depends. That's, this was the easiest way to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let's just go on. Uh, I have here also. Uh, I, I, I see also here a, a very German. interesting I question. I translated it. I hope it's still the right meaning. Um, how is the module informed in which country? it is operated. Depending on this, the transmission power must be limited by the radio product. Um, yes. So if a module is certified 
for a country, everything is fine. You don't have to consider what, what to do with the module because it's certified. Um, but of course, um, you can uh, set power settings and, and so on in the module in the software then. But uh, when you buy a module which is certified, just so for example, our Bluetooth model, which is certified for CE, FCC, IC, and so on, this is tested and uh, allowed in all countries to use. So you have don't you don't have to tell the module yeah. where it's operated now. So it's certified and you can use it. Certified and easy. Right. Okay, thank you. Then next question. Uh, the uh, attendee also said, sorry, not exactly the subject of the webinar, but yeah, let, maybe let's try if we can help. Um, apply the different country certifications for NFC and RFID as well? Um, to be honest, I'm not sure, but uh, I think it, it's, it's similar about the regulations, but you have to, to look in the regulations for the countries, what about NFC and RFID? We don't have any products in this frequency range, so that's why I don't know it for the moment. But I think it's very similar and uh, you have to look in the country specific regulations then. Okay, thank you very much, Bodo. Then last question for now, which I can see. Um, what about narrowband and LoRa technologies? Is there any WE module capable for this? Not now, but soon. So, um, I think at the end of yeah. this year or beginning next year, our uh, LoRa module will be released. Yeah, correct. Um, for 868 megahertz in the first step, uh, so usable in Europe. And uh, also our proprietary radio modules are narrow band, so to say. We have very small bandwidth modules here. Yeah. Okay. So then... We answered all questions, so I think, yeah, you cool. did a good job <laughs> with your presentation when there are no <laughs> thank uh, you. more questions thank left. You. Uh, thank you very much, Bodo and Pascal, for your presentation. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks to you. Thank for you to the, the, thanks to the participants who take the right. time to listen to our presentation and the certification topic. And, you know, if there are any questions, yeah, W3S at weonline.com. <laughs> exactly. So then I hope you stay tuned on our digital we days and yeah, have a good day. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.